Ricky. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Nathan, and a very, very big welcome, everybody, to this evening's masterclass. I'm absolutely thrilled that you have taken the time to be here tonight. It, it means that your parenting and relationships are important to you, and for that, we are, are very, very grateful. If you are on Zoom, welcome to you on Zoom. I can see a bunch of people there on Zoom. If you are on Facebook Live, welcome to you there as well. We really encourage you to participate this evening, to write comments, to yeah, say hello, let us know you are there. If you're on Zoom, let us know you're on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, say hello on Facebook so that um, yeah, we know you're there. And also Nathan is going to be popping your names into the wheel of prizes that we will draw um, at the end of this evening's masterclass. So let's get moving. Are you ready for an amazing journey with your family filled with ease, joy and calm? I'm assuming that is a big yes from everybody. So just uh, confirming you can see my screen okay. So a huge big congratulations for joining us in this Parenting Masterclass. We really want to acknowledge you for being here live tonight. Um, or if you're listening into the replay, um, Thank you for, for tuning into the replay. And as I said, we would love to encourage you to participate all in this evening. So let us know who you are. Let us know where you're coming in from. You might let it, like to let us know a little bit about your family. But if you are over the yelling, nagging and threats just to get your kids to listen, you are in the right place tonight. We're going to talk about a beautiful approach to parenting and relationship called the Nurtured Heart Approach. But before we do that, we're going to share a little bit about our story. Now, I actually do have a magical parenting wand here. So if I was to wave this magical parenting wand, what would you most love us to magically do or solve for you? So if you'd like to pop in the, um, in the comments on Facebook or on Zoom, what would you like us to solve for you or help you with? What would you like to get out of this masterclass this evening? And by the end of the masterclass, I want you to please take note of something that you've learned that will be helpful, helpful for you and helpful for your family and relationships. And then also to be thinking about what will your action steps be moving forward? Because of course, we, when we learn something, if we don't take action, then it's really been a bit of a waste of time. So we need to take action. So what will we cover in this masterclass this evening? Um, we will, I'm just going to mute, uh, we will uh, be covering our family's journey and why we are so passionate about helping so many families to enjoy happier and healthier children and relationships. Uh, I'm going to talk about how I was introduced to the Nurtured Heart Approach. I also have one of my friends and colleagues on with us this evening, who is also an advanced trainer in the Nurtured Heart Approach. He's going to be jumping on towards the end of this evening's uh, presentation. I'm going to talk about what is Nurtured Heart Approach and uh, how it can help all of your relationships. I would love you to put in the chat, whether you are on Zoom or Facebook, have you heard of the Nurtured Heart Approach? And maybe what do you know about it? Um, I'm going to talk about transformation starts with us, inner wealth and building a positive portfolio. Then Nathan, who you heard just earlier, is going to come in and share with us around health and wellness for you and your family. And then we will finish off with what we can offer you if you want to learn more and strengthen your relationships. And Rachel will come in then. And we've also got some prizes to give away as well. So please do stick around to the end because for those who stick around to the end, you will go into the prize draw. Uh, we will be giving a prize, an amazing prize away of a 50% discount for our Nurtured Heart to Greatness rolling course, which is a huge, huge prize. Uh, two one-on-one -on -one calls, uh, 60 to 90 minutes with myself, and then also a supplement voucher from naturopath Nathan. Okay, so who am I? Nathan shared um, a little about me, but I'm the mum of now two adult sons. Our story is, is about our youngest son, but of course it does involve our eldest son as well. I am a primary school teacher by uh, profession. I have a degree in the Bachelor of Education. Um, I also have a degree in what we call tongue and cheek, a degree in TTP, which is tried and tested parenting. 
So I've been a parenting strategist now for close to 25 years. As Nathan said, I've authored six books. I'm a nurtured heart approach, advanced trainer. Over the years, I've done thousands of seminars and workshops and facilitated courses um, in the last 20, 25 years. I've been a parenting specialist on weekly radio. I've been featured on TV and many magazines and newspapers, and more recently, a sought after podcast guest um, for podcasts and parenting summits all around the world. So our story, I'm going to whiz through our story reasonably quickly, but I think it's really important for you to understand why I'm so passionate about this. Why am I here tonight teaching this to you or sharing with you? I want to make a difference for other families and help them in their journeys with their parenting. So whether you're struggling in your parenting or whether you're going okay in your parenting and you just want to notch it up and learn how to even relationship even better, whatever reason you're here for is absolutely fantastic. So I have two amazing adult sons now in their late 20s and 30s. Our second son was born uh, seven and a half years after big brother Nathan. And Nathan, as a, as a child, was very quiet and very passive, you know, cooperative and compliant and all those sort of things. But then younger brother comes along and um, his birth for a start was extremely uh, stressful. I was put on a stress monitor um, whilst in labour. He basically was born screaming and he didn't stop for quite a few years. Uh, we had a lot of challenges from birth. He was really irritable. Literally, unless he was breastfeeding or sleeping, he was screaming. He was always unsettled and he didn't sleep very well. He was an unhappy baby. Big brother was unhappy. Big brother was stressed. Parents were very stressed. It really was a challenging place to be in our home, a stressful place when he was younger, actually right through most of his childhood. So he looks adorable there, doesn't he? That's a picture of him in childcare. Um, he actually went to five centres over, over two years and we've invited a lot of childcare um, educators on the call tonight and directors and in the country town, the large country town that we lived in back when he was in childcare, there were five childcare centres only and he got a stint in all of them basically because he was so challenging and they really, really struggled with his behaviour and parents were complaining a lot about his behaviour so we felt compelled to take him out and move on. So he was diagnosed as early as three and a half by um, a, a psychologist who came into one of the childcare centres and initially he was diagnosed with childhood depression. After that diagnosis, he was diagnosed further by a paediatrician, other psychologists and even psychiatrists with ODD, which is Oppositional Defiant Disorder, and ADHD, which I think most people have heard of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, all before he even started school. And medication was recommended by all. So for those of you who are in childcare or, you know, have children in childcare, you will know that, you know, the aim of the childcare centre is to keep all of the children safe. Now, sadly, when our son um, from age three to five was in childcare, he was very challenging and he could be very, very aggressive. So we actually, I think this was in the fourth childcare centre that he was in, um, that they kept a communication book. And every day when I went to pick him up, from childcare, I got presented with the um, with this um, yeah this communication book. And what you can see there on the screen, I won't read it out. I'll let you have a quick look at that. Was just the first few things on on many pages. So they were like every day there were pages and pages of all the things he'd done wrong. So he was really challenging. Uh, he was challenging the carers, and they were doing the best that they could. Um, to care for him and to keep all the other children safe, but he really was trying them, you know, in a big way. And now that I know what I know, I know that there was a lot of up, upside down relationshiping and connecting happening back then, but I know, you know, that they were doing their best at the time, but he was, he, he really tested them. He was really challenging. So once again, he looks cute. He takes a good photo. You know, this is this is his first day of school. He looks happy enough, but let me tell you, it was a very, very stressful year. His first year in primary school after having done five childcare centres and kindies, et cetera, uh, in his first year in just a regular child, uh, regular, you know, primary school, he literally spent more time in timeout than he did learning. 
um, that once again, the teachers just didn't know how to handle him. So instead of, you know, trying to, to do something with him, she had to, you know, look after the rest of the class, I guess. And he spent a lot of time in time out or out of the classroom. And we eventually took him out of that traditional school into a Steiner school. And um, he was very happy in the Steiner school. They really catered to him a lot better than um, other, other places had. Sadly, the Steiner School closed down um, due to economic reasons, financial reasons, which we were really, really sad about. And then we then decided to move into state. We actually moved into state in some ways for family, but in some ways because we just had such a negative reputation in our town, if that makes sense. So he then went, he went to another primary school in Victoria before we came to Queensland. And then he went to another primary school that didn't go so well. Then we moved him into another um, school and started him in year seven. Um, he unfortunately got asked to leave that school. That was a private school. So he went from primary school to primary school to three primary schools within a year. Then um, we switched him over to this private school, you know, thinking that, you know, a stricter kind of more, you know, disciplined school might be the way to go. But let me tell you, it was not a positive experience for him. Actually, it was it was very negative. Uh, he was actually asked to leave at the end of um, at the end of uh, year. Uh, sorry, the, the end of the first term of year eight. He actually had a reputation at that school, and he earned <laughs> he earned something that we're not so proud of. But he had the most red cards, which was their disciplinary system. So they went from yellow to green to blue to red, and he had a reputation by the time he was in year eight to have the most red cards. Um, it wasn't something that we were proud of, but, you know, that's just where things were at. And that's how they handled him by, by punishing him. Uh, sadly, that just didn't work for him or for us or for anybody. So, you know, this was definitely a very stressful time in our parenting journey. As you can imagine, he had an older brother as well, you know, that we had to, had to you know, give some, some time and attention to, which he missed out a lot, actually, because of, you know, the demand that, that, that this, his younger brother placed on the family. He was really, really demanding of all of us. Um, the years between um, age 13 and 15 really were the most stressful time in our parenting journey. And, and that's why we call it the revolt. Uh, one of my books, um, my third book actually is called The Revolting Child, A Blessing in Disguise. You can actually download that for free at my website if you want to read. That's our whole story. And for the childcare educators, there's a whole section in there on his, his um, time in childcare, which you will find really quite interesting. So age 13 to 15, um, 10x the challenges that we had in, you know, from age three to five. We thought age three to five was stressful, but age 13 to 15 was even more stressful. Um, he basically... <laughs> was at school less than he was not at school. Like he he had non-attendance or suspended for more days than he attended. So basically he either truanted or he was um or he was suspended from school for truanting and doing a whole bunch of other stuff, which didn't make a whole lot of sense at, at the time. Um, he had a terrible, terrible reputation with the teachers. We had many, many calls from the school. Um, and he was labelled as a, as a troublemaker at school, sometimes getting into trouble for things that he didn't even participate in because he had such a reputation. Can anybody relate to any of what I'm saying, either from the perspective of in childcare or even, you know, through primary school and secondary school? I know it was extremely, extremely challenging. And he started mixing with the wrong crowds. He started getting into very inappropriate behaviours, in trouble with the police, use your imagination, hanging out with kids he shouldn't have, doing things he shouldn't have, taking things he shouldn't have. And it was very, very stressful for his father and myself, who were good parents. We're good people. You know, I was a teacher. You know, I was, uh, you know, like I was a great teacher, but I was struggling in my own home with my own son. So if that's you, please Please know that you're not alone in that in that feeling. He ended up leaving school, or let's say got kicked out of school at 15 uh, with very poor school attendance and grades. Uh, then fortunately for us, um, and this is another whole story which you can actually read in the Revolting Child book if, if you choose to, to download that and read it. Um, he, um, we actually 
met with um, the universe helped us to um, to meet a parenting coach called Frank. We called him our angel. We never met him in person. He was from the States. Um, we did very, very regular um, coaching calls with him for two years. And he really, really helped us to get back on track, which is why I'm so now passionate about being a parenting strategist and a coach helping other families as well, because he really literally saved our family, saved our life. So we just started coaching with, um, with Frank when we had an incident, which is probably, if I was to be totally transparent, the worst parenting experience in my absolute parenting journey of, you know, 30 odd years. Um, I was doing a lot of what we call upside down parenting, you know, the yelling, the nagging, the threats, um, and it was all very upside down. And I'll talk a little bit more about that if you don't understand what that means. And that led to very, very challenging and disconnected relationships in our family. There was an incident where um, we had just recently connected with our coach. So we hadn't really, you know, we were just starting to, to, to get um, a feel for, for what he was teaching us. And I got yet another phone call from the school. You know, your son's been in trouble. He's um, he's done this, this and this. He's going to be suspended for 20 days. We need you to come up to the school. And this was in November, you know, edging towards the end of the school year. And he was going to be suspended for 20 days. It just didn't make sense. Anyway, they called to let me know that he'd taken off from school. And I just figured, you know, he was angry. He'd come home. He did come home eventually, actually, and instead of being a beautiful, compassionate mother and saying, how was your, your day, you know, even I heard, you know, I got a phone call from the school, but tell me your perspective, you know, what happened and what's your side of the story. I just went straight into upside down parenting. How could you do this? I'm over getting these calls from the school. Why can't you behave? You know, you're grounded forever. Keep in mind, he's now, you know, 15 and taller than I am. So... And with that, the poor kid, when I look back on it, it makes me feel so sad because he must have thought, even mum doesn't believe in me. Even mum's not even willing to hear my side of the story. To cut quite a very painful story short, over the next four to five hours, um, we were trying to find him, figure out where he was. My husband got in his car, drove around our neighbourhood. We, we found him finally uh, much, much later that night in an absolute drunken stupor in the gutter. That's not him in that photo, but that's pretty much when he, what he looked like. Um, my husband had to carry him home. He was vomiting. He, was, he didn't even know his name or who he was. And it took him two days to sober up. He was that bad. And in that time... We had we did some coaching with with Frank, our parenting coach, and um, we dealt with that situation in a very very different way. I don't have time to go into that tonight, but a lot of what I teach now with the nurtured heart approach is what we did in that situation. It was not pleasant initially, I can tell you. So as you can see there, you know he had this kind of you know defiance, you know this kind of you know revolting. I'm, I'm revolting look about him and um, after the after the revolt and when the healing you know began you can actually even see the difference he's the same kid right but you can just see the softness in his face and you know that he, he looks happy there and after you know 10 months you know of of working with our parenting coach boy did we have some absolute transformation he mended his uh, relationship with his big, big brother Nathan and that at that time was extremely stressful um, and now as as fully grown adults they are, are, are good friends great friends dare I say they have a lot of common interests they hang out together they do things together and you know they've they've really learned to love and appreciate each other which is just beautiful to see from a mother's perspective but it definitely wasn't that way back when our son was you know 14 15 16. So this is my gorgeous family. So my hubby, Andrew, and myself, this is my youngest son. This is Nathan, um, my elder son, and, and Amy, who is, is Caleb's partner. So I have a beautiful, beautiful family. Um, Caleb has actually been working with his dad now in business since 2012. So this is their 12th year um, of working together, which is absolutely amazing. Considering that he got kicked out of school at 15 and was told, we were told by the principal that he would never achieve anything, that he would never get an apprenticeship with his attitude and with his grades. Well, my son went to and proved him differently. Not only did he become an electrical contractor, 
but he actually went into business and has a very successful business with his dad. So they are um, absolutely not only business partners, but best mates as well. He's such a beautiful young man. So this was written when he was 15. So this was written, you know, to his dad to show his dad his appreciation of, you know, he wrote one for me as well, but I'm just sharing the one he wrote for his dad here. And he wrote this beautiful poem to his dad. He, he wrote beautiful poems to me as well. I've got them all. They're just beautiful. Um, he's a very soft, you know, heart-centered communicator. He's really good at communicating. And I still get beautiful notes and flowers and, and recognition and acknowledge from him now all the time. He's just a beautiful young man. And I'm so glad that, you know, we did the things that we did to get to where we are today. Because sometimes I think when you're in that stress, you feel like you're distressed to the max and, you know, traumatized by everything that's going on. Sometimes we can't see beyond where we are in the moment. So if you are in that situation, please know that there is hope that things can improve tenfold absolutely without a doubt so I want to share with you nurtured heart approach this is is what I'm super super passionate about it came to me by accident um, I actually um, had I had been coaching parents for many years before I found out about the nurtured heart approach but I, I guess and I've written six books but I was always looking for something that I could teach that was a little simpler and more systematic for parents to be able to take on board and I, I found out about the Nurtured Heart Approach quite accidentally um, by um, a, a psychologist that I met at an event. And when I shared with her, you know, what I was doing, she said, oh, is that the Nurtured Heart Approach? I'm like, no, I've never heard of that. So I went and Googled it and found out about it. Um, I actually became a groupie for, for the, the, the psychologist who was teaching it here in Australia. And in 2014, when Howard Glasser, the founder, of the Nurtured Heart Approach came to Australia for the very first certified training. I was there in the very first one. So I became a trainer in 2014. And then in 2021, I then became qualified to be an advanced trainer. So this is a little message from Howie. So I'll just play this little video. Hi, Lillian. Hi, my friends in Australia. Um, I am so happy you found your way to the Nurtured Heart Approach. Uh, you're in the best of hands, and uh, I hope you enjoy the ride. It, it will be revealing and fun and empowering. Be well. <laughs> Thank you, Howie. He did that especially for me, which was very sweet of him. He's, he's my mentor. I really adore him. He's an amazing man who has such a passion for helping all families and all children to, to flourish. So the Nurtured Heart Approach initially did start because Howard Glasser is a family counsellor and he used to work with, um, with challenging kids, with kids, a lot of kids who had diagnoses like ADHD. And initially the, um, the approach was um, devised for those kids to deal with those, um, those labelled kids, those, you know, kids that, that had ADHD and other, and other such things. But we've come to realise now that really it is about transforming and helping all children to flourish. So it's really not about just challenging kids or challenging families or challenging relationships. It's to help every single one of us improve our relationships and the fun thing about it is it's not just about relationships between parent and child um, in the in the, the many 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 people I've coached on this now over the years what they say to me is that the improvement and the the results are not just about parenting but they actually people actually improve their relationships with their partners with their other family members definitely with their children and probably even most importantly their relationship with themselves so it's quite transformational on lots and lots of levels so transformation really does start with us i know that when Frank, our parenting coach, said if you have a revolting child in your home, and I mean the act of revolt, um, he said, don't blame it on the child, look in the mirror. And that was actually hard when he said that because, you know, we always thought, well, it's about, the, you know, it's about our son. Why isn't he behaving? Why is he, you know, being so disre disrespectful? Why is he breaking all of the rules? But we never really thought to look at ourselves 
which um, we really needed to. So transformation really does start with us, whether we're parents, with you know caregivers, in education, in childcare, in, in in school, you know educators, any adults of influence. It really does start with us. You know, um, if we're not in a positive place as a parent or a partner or you know just a person in general, it's really tricky for us to bring what we need into our parenting. So the great thing about the nurtured heart approach is that it also allows you to work on you. So you get to you get to see you for the wonderful qualities you have and that are growing in you, and you get to acknowledge your greatness, your strengths, and build on your own inner wealth as well as um, that of your children. Which is what I love about this. People always say to me, Lily, and this is so much more than a parenting course. It's so much more. So in the nurtured heart approach, we aim to build what we call inner wealth. Um, and a positive portfolio for our children. So what is inner wealth? For me, inner wealth encompasses a lot of things. It would be a combination of, we talk about self-esteem, self-worth, self-love, self you know, self-appreciation, really seeing ourselves as the absolutely amazing, incredible person that we have with so much greatness. So our goal is to really help build that inner wealth in both ourselves and our children. And I've had many conversations lately with, um, with, with people, with parents and people in general about what some of our young people are carrying in their current portfolio. Things like, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm unpopular, you know, I can't get things right, I'm always in trouble, you know, I continue to get yelled at, I'm broken and need fixing, I'm not understood, no one wants to listen to me, you know, things work out for others, but not for me, I'm not, you know, all of these things that, you know, that that kids and, and, and adults alike have in their portfolio. And, you know, sometimes when kids have, have got all that stuff in their portfolio, unfortunately, they carry it through into their, you know, teenage years and then into their adult life as well. So what we really want to do is build um, a portfolio full of, of positive things. So it's not really about erasing the old portfolio. The task is really to create a new portfolio that's energetically aligned with the greatness they really have. We want to confront children with who they are by using any moment to point out their successes. And that's really what the Nurtured Heart Approach is all about. Embed um, what we have to say about a child's greatness in the firsthand experience of the moment. So we want in their portfolio to be things like, I'm kind, I'm loving, I'm thoughtful, I'm resilient, I'm considerate, respectful, I have great self-control, I manage my emotions, I make great decisions, I learn from my mistakes, I'm happy, I have great relationships, I follow my dreams, you know, I'm healthy, I, I'm good enough. We really want them to have a strong sense of self and know what they stand for and so that they can also say no to what they don't align with. Who would love that for their children? Who would love that for themselves as well, right? But we definitely want for our children. So our one of our biggest goals in the Nurtured Heart Approach is to build our children's inner wealth and their portfolio and put in all of that beautiful stuff as opposed to what we shared on the prior slide. So I'm going to briefly share with you about the Nurtured Heart Approach. I do 24-week courses in this. So as you can imagine, there's a lot to learn, but it, it is simple, but it's kind of like learning a new language. You know, we're so used to communicating and relationshiping the way we do today. It's, it's a generational thing, isn't it? Like our parents communicated in relationship with us in that way. We often carry that forward. And with that, what we carry forward with that often is a lot of stress and trauma as well. So the Nurtured Heart, a core methodology is based on three stands, absolutely no, absolutely yes, and absolutely clear. And if you think about the word taking a stand, what does that mean? It's very purposeful. You know, when we take a stand, we get clear, we get resolute, we're precise. You can't stay, take a stand when you're wishy-washy. So if you're taking a stand on something, you're taking a stand on it, but you have to be really resolute about it. So let's just have a really quick look at the three stands. So stand one is absolutely no. So this is what I was so, excuse my expression, but sucking at really badly when I was parenting my son, you know, particularly in his, his young teenage years. Um, so stand one is I refuse to energize negativity. 
I will not reward negativity, which can include disruptions and outbursts that distract children from their greatness with elevated energy connection or relationship. I will be intentional to watch where my energy is flowing. And you may have heard of that, that saying where attention goes, energy flows and results show. So for me in that instant, if you think about that instant when he got in trouble at school and he came home, I was energizing the negativity. I was just focusing on all the things that had gone wrong. And I wasn't even looking for you know, anything that might have gone right or even giving him the opportunity to talk about that, if that makes sense. So stand two is my favorite because this is where we can actually come in and acknowledge and recognize each other for our successes and for the things that we're doing well. So stand two is absolutely yes. I relentlessly create and energize positivity and success. I energize and nurture firsthand experience of success. And I will work immediately to identify, describe and express appreciation of steps large and small a child takes in manifesting his or her positive choices and intrinsic greatness. And I will actively initiate opportunities for children to be successful. So when you're learning the nurtured heart approach, we actually have um, specific recognition techniques that we teach you because often it's not natural for us to focus on the positive and to use, you know, not just a well done, good job, pat on the back, which we in nurtured heart approach call kind of junk food praise. We really want to give juicy, nourishing recognition, um, not only to our children, but to each other as well, to, to us adults as well, to our partners and, and our colleagues in our workplace and things. We want to recognize people for what we're doing well, instead of just focusing on all the stuff that's going wrong. Um, who, who, who'd like to live in a world like that, where we acknowledge and recognize things going well, or even the baby steps towards going well? So stand three is absolutely clear. Now, people often want to get to stand three first, but if, if you can imagine, it's a bit like, you know, if you were building a three-story house, you can't build the third level first. So when you learn the three stands of the nurtured heart approach, it's a little bit like a dance. And as you learn the stands and the steps, you'll start learning how to put those steps into practice and you will practice them. And then eventually, once you're feeling confident with the three stands, you'll just do the nurtured heart dance really beautifully and, and flow in flow. So stand three is being absolutely clear. So it's being clear about limits and, and, and consequences um, and you enforce those in a really unenergized way. It's about, um, I will consistently enforce rules and provide immediate consequences each time a rule is broken by the way of a simple form of consequence we call a reset. Now you'll learn about this in the, in the course. Um, I will recognize the child in the moment they have reset and create the next moment as an opportunity for success. So instead of focusing on the challenge that might have just happened, um, the real broken, you know, the squabbling with, with a, a sibling or, you know, whatever has just happened, instead of focusing on that, we want to give the child the opportunity to reset so that they can then come back um, and come back into a positive, um, a positive zone. We don't want to be focusing on that negativity um, and, and building relationship around that uh, negativity because kids actually get to learn pretty, pretty early in life, you know, how, how they get the best energy and connection and relationship from us. So, and which brings me to the next, to the next topic of Toys or Us. So who's ever realized that we are our children's most exciting toys? You know, you think about when a child gets a new toy, they want to really, you know, explore it and see, you know, what features it has to offer and they want to find the compelling features and then they'll soon figure out, you know, the features um, that are boring as well and, and they probably won't stick with those for long. So how are we like toys and mums? If you're on the call and you're a mum, often we as mums are our kids' favourite toys and our kids learn really, really soon how to get the best out of us, how to get our attention and connection and relationship. And they, you know, we have by far the greatest features of any other toy. And we teach kids probably inadvertently from a young age how to connect and relationship with us by focusing on our energy and connection and relationship on things going wrong. So the kids 
pretty much control us. You know, this is my air conditioner remote control here, but you know, they combine all of the features um, and we are their ultimate entertainment center. So they know where the buttons are. They know when they press the button, how to get connection and relationship with us. And sometimes it doesn't even matter to them if it's positive or negative relationship. They just want connection and relationship. And sadly, they learn often from a young age that they're going to get more of that connection and relationship when things are going wrong, when rules are broken, when they're mucking up, when they're squabbling or fighting or not listening or not cooperating or not eating their dinner or not doing their homework. That's when we as parents and educators and caregivers of children, that's when we come to life, right? So when things are going right, you know, they might get a quick, good job, you know, thank you. But that becomes like the boring toy feature in comparison to the really blinking lights and bells and whistles that negativity and non-compliance brings out in us. So who can relate to that? Who can relate to that upside down energy? You know, we're boring when things are going right. And our responses to the positive pale in relation to those for the negative. So we inadvertently show children that they get more from negativity. Can anybody relate to that? Pop in the, in the comments either on Zoom or on Facebook if they can relate to that. We inadvertently you know, advertise to them that we give greater connectivity when things are going wrong by the way of our normal and traditional you know, methods of parenting and teaching. And, and we're not to blame as parents or educators. We're just doing what we know. Like we're, you know, we're just doing what, what we've done or what our parents have done. And that tends to be, you know, what gets passed down and what we and how we react and communicate as, as um, parents and educators. So if you think about when uh, are you radiating the most energy and maybe think back to the last 24, 48 hours or few days in your home, can you think of some examples of when your buttons were really pushed? Um, the things that really made you react vibrantly Think about an incident that might have happened recently where you might have done one of these things, threatening, punishing, reprimanding, nagging, lecturing or yelling um, at our kids. Think about the incident. So did you come more to life when the kid was mucking up? Did you come in with all of that energy and, you know, and connection and relationship with them when they weren't listening, when they were breaking the rules, when they were being uncooperative or disrespectful or arguing? Or did you give more attention to um, relationship and connection when they were doing the right thing? You know, think about that. I mean, sometimes we do come in with beautiful energy and relationship when they're doing the right thing, but we so easily, so easily go into that, you know, um, high, you know, intensity kind of high, you know, our bells and whistles come on, you know, our face goes red and our, you know, our, our pupils are popping. Like sometimes we get so angry and so stressed and so, um, so escalated when kids are mucking up and we're giving them all this energy in that moment. And they get to learn time and time again, that that's how they get relationship from us. So if you think about um, a watering can, and I've actually got one here, that I use just an ex as an example, you know, what are you watering and giving energy to? So imagine if you took your watering can out into the garden and put some nice um, fresh water and maybe put some plant nutrients in it and you're going out into the garden and you start watering the weeds. So most of us wouldn't on purpose go and water the weeds, would we? We wouldn't give that nice clean water and the, and the nutrients to the weeds. But that's, that's similar to us as parents watering what's going wrong instead of what's going right. If we've got that watering can full of nice water and nutrients, we want to water the things that we want to grow, like the plants and the herbs and the veggie patch and the flowers. We don't want to water the weeds, but inadvertently in so many instances, particularly when we're feeling escalated, we start watering the weeds. And guess what? When we water the weeds, the weeds grow. So I, I, I love that analogy. I think it's a really, you know, analogy that you can think about. And even if you imagine yourself, you know, um, carrying that watering a can, can around with you. So we have this upside down energy. And for some children, you know, that becomes a pattern for them. 
you know, if the toy, i.e. us, mum, dad, educator, is more animated, compelling and alive and energised when things are going wrong, then that gets translated and transmitted energetically to feeling more loved, more valued and more celebrated in relation to, to, to problems. So, um, and kids kids work that out so young. You know, they, they, they really do work that out so young and they come to think, and understand that the main time they receive really focused quality time is when they've broken a rule and when they get a lecture or a reprimand. So mum and dad can say they love good behaviour all day long, but the truth of the energy sometimes is that the child deeply feels being more loved and connected when things are going wrong because that's when mum and dad really show up. And, and the kids probably think, look, they're barely there when um, when they're doing the right thing. They might get that you know, thank you, good job, you know, pat on the back type of thing, but they're not getting that real juicy connection that they sometimes do get when um, when when they're mucking up and doing the wrong thing. So that's just a really quick overview of the nurtured heart approach. Um, there's so much to it. In some ways, it's so simple. And in other ways, there's a lot to it. But it's like, if you imagine like a complicated dance, I don't know if you're good at dancing or not. I'm not very good at dancing. But imagine if somebody was wanting to teach you a really fancy dance that's got lots of steps and moves and things, you know, like those really professional dances that you see. And you look at the dance and you go, there's no way I'm going to learn that dance if I just show it to you and go, okay, now copy me and do the dance. But if I teach you that dance step by step, okay, this is step one left foot right you know right foot to the back you know just a couple of simple steps now go away for a week and practice those steps practice 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 then come back next week let's learn the next part of the dance and eventually over weeks and maybe months depending on how complicated the dance is you're going to get into the flow you're going to go okay I know the steps and you start putting the steps together and then eventually you'll be doing that beautiful dance without even thinking about it whereas at the start you might have gone oh my gosh there's no way I can learn that dance so it's it's kind of a little bit similar with the nurtured heart approach it's something we start teaching you know the the, the various steps and then eventually it will all come together and you'll just be able to do that beautiful nurtured heart dance without even thinking about it and it will become the way you communicate in relationship with everybody including ourselves because we have to be kind to ourselves as well don't we we have to be good to ourselves and look at our own strengths and our own greatness so I'm going to leave that bit there now with the nurtured heart approach and I'm happy to chat to people more about that um, after the master class in the in the coming days if you've got any questions etc but I'm going to hand over to Nathan now because what we've come to realize over the years, and I've come to realize over the 25 plus years of um, working with parents, is it's sometimes a bit like baking a cake. So there, you know, to have a nice cake that works and tastes good and looks good, you've got to put in certain ingredients, right? And if you miss out on some of the key ingredients, the cake's either going to flop or it's going to taste terrible, right? So we need to make sure all of the appropriate ingredients go into the cake. Now, I feel after, you know, all the work that I've been doing, I've written six books, you know, I've talked about health and wellness and all of that sort of stuff. I am so super passionate about the way that we relationship and talk to our children and about the nurtured heart approach. That is my absolute passion. But I know that if children are experiencing challenges in with behavior or, you know, um, in their health and wellness, emotional, physical, mental health and wellness, that sometimes there are more things happening. It's not just about the, the, the parenting and the relationshiping, like there's other stuff going on as well. So I'm very privileged to actually have my, my amazing eldest son work with me in, um, in helping parents to really enjoy happy and healthy children and relationships. He actually became a naturopath and a herbalist and nutritionist because of our family's journey, because of the way that um, our family was so stressed and so traumatized. Nathan, as a young person, was a very quiet and compliant and cooperative kid, as I said. But let me tell you, he struggled in our home to the point where when he was a young teenager, he 
felt he didn't want to live anymore. I won't go too much into that story, but it's in my book if you want to read it. He was so sad and upset about our family dynamics that he didn't even want to live in our home or be with us or even be on this earth, if you get my drift. So he became a naturopath because he saw the changes that we made in our own family and the transformation. So um, he, he did a triple degree in uh, naturopathy, herbal medicine and nutrition. And he um, is a passionate and caring naturopath, and but he has so much expertise in not only this area, but as you can see there in lots of areas, but um, I'd love to welcome him onto the call. He's going to cover some just um, foundational um, health areas, like um, depending on on how long he's got. You've probably yeah got fifteen or twenty minutes, Nathan, if you need it. Uh, he'll cover the you know the gut, the liver, the bowels, diet, and food intolerances, um, keeping your environment toxin free, importance of therapeutic water, sleep. Um, he'll touch on getting tested for pyrrole and methylation, heavy metals, et cetera, emotional health and wellness. So it's working together as a team. It's not just about the child. So Nathan, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, I'm just letting you know that Nathan won't have his camera on um, only because he had an accident today and he's broken his front tooth. So you'll hear Nathan, but you won't see him. So over to you, Nathan. Thank you very much for that. And um, just give me a sound check. Let me know that I'm nice and clear. Yes, you are awesomely clear. Okay, perfect. So when I've seen patients over the last decade, it probably took me a good half the time to really understand that most of it was emotional. The doctor I work with, she was so holistic and taught me so much, um, but I'm very left brain and scientific. And so it took me a while to figure out it's not just all physical. Um, and that's why it's so important that you bring in all the emotional aspect that we've just been going through. But in saying that, if I was to summarize all of the things that I typically see wrong in most conditions and the thousands of patients that I've seen, I'm about to run through them with you now. So why is the gut so important? We're going to go through, if we can go to the next slide, and look at the connection between your mood and your gut bacteria. So if you can um, handle the slides for me. Perfect. So it's, it's actually amazing to think that when you are eating something and you're digesting the food and you're breaking the nutrients down and, and absorbing them, you're also feeding an entire ecology of bacteria. And we are actually more bacteria than anything else. And that bacteria has a huge influence on who we are, how we feel and how we think. And anytime we're eating something that damages the lining of the gut, whether it be food intolerances, uh, and you might find that you physically react to that. It could be constipation or it could be bloating or gas or just really tired. Um, these are some of the questions you're going to be asking your children like when they're eating or if you're noticing that they um, are getting irritated or their behavior is worsening, just start asking about what else are they feeling in their body because their external um, symptoms of you know misbehaving might be a result of what they're feeling internally. And that is just damage to their gut. Uh, unfortunately, when there is damage through either eating something that we shouldn't um, or just in general mentally being stressed, the lining of the gut opens up and allows toxins to come into the body and damages all the good bacteria that are living throughout this mucosa membrane. And we then call this dysbiosis, where the gut becomes permeable and continues to leak toxins in. Next slide. So when it comes to uh, you know, the typical things to look out for, these are the ones to look at at the back of packaged foods. So it's really a good idea to take a photo of this or ask for a screenshot. Uh, and just keep in mind that if you can't read the ingredients on the back of foods, probably shouldn't be eating it. The cleaner the food ingredient list, the better. Because as you can see, if you look at some of the um, additives, and this is just additives, right? There's so many more artificial flavors and colors. Uh, 
and you can see there on the right hand side some of the symptoms from it but you'll notice and I 100% notice in my brother when he ate something he shouldn't it triggered him severely so again let's just stop damaging the damage let's stop damaging our body and our children's body by looking at what we're eating next so once you've done that and you've looked at okay here's all the foods I've cut out all the artificial stuff anything I can't recognize what are some of the important things that I really need to make sure in my child's diet? It's not also just about your children. It's about you as well. But especially for children, um, here's five of the top nutrients required that I typically see low when I'm doing mineral tissue uh, analysis. So zinc, B6, magnesium, vitamin D, and fish oil, of which EPA and DHA make up type of omega-3 so you can see on the left hand side again you can go back to this and and pause it and look at it later uh, but all of the symptoms for mental health associated with a deficiency of zinc so wherever you see the why it says yes that's associated with not having enough zinc and um, what that is likely to cause or it'll show you what the mineral is actually doing so if we can go to the next slide and you'll see that not just mental health is affected, but also the way our body is healing and the way it's regulating our body, whether it be sleep or muscles um, or just the growth of your child, improving how well their um, brain is developing, you can see all the important nutrients um, and essential fats involved. So simply just making sure you're getting enough of those nutrients is going to make a huge difference. The other aspect I find is once you've stopped damaging the gut and you're bringing in all the good nutrients, it's like, what else are we being damaged by? And unfortunately, our environment is quite toxic. And you can look at some of the stats here where pesticides are being associated um, with the impact of the brain development and the incidence of ADHD and other mental health um, you know, labels. I don't like to use labels, but um, that's just what the stats show. We really need to make sure that the foods that we're eating, we do something about removing the pesticides or choose organic and spray fit free in the first place. And next. We actually put together this bit of a home audit. Um, and again, if you, you can request on the Facebook page for this, uh, it is essentially a something you can print off and you start looking through your personal care. Uh, and anything you're putting on or in your body uh, for the first two categories, you can look at uh, any of these red ingredients in my cosmetics or in the shampoos and conditioners or body wash that my children are using. And if you're seeing quite a few come up on a cumulative basis, along with everything else, like electromagnetic frequencies and Wi-Fi and all the other chemicals that we're exposed to these days, they really add up. And so if you can just reduce and start to choose more harmful free brands that are very conscious of what they put in their products, then all of a sudden your body is not being assaulted. You're not waking up on the on the back foot trying to repair damage being done by what you just put in it the day before. And next slide. A big part of what we put in our body and how our body detoxifies is through water. And you really need about 33 mil per body kilo of water. So if you weigh 100, that's 3.3 liters. Uh, and most of us are just not simply getting enough water. And I recommend all my patients drink as much as they can to get to that 33 mil per body kilo minimum. Um, but a lot of the time, they're just drinking tap water. And as you can see, tap water if it's not therapeutic, it's going to contain all of these toxins. And we at least need a filter that's going to remove these. And in the next slide, you're going to see what happens um, when we are able to remove these chemicals, uh, what we can then do with water, and we call it therapeutic water. So water can just be cleaned and it's run through a filter, uh, but we can then take it the next step further and use the opportunity of drinking water to then actively repair our body. So once the, filters, the filter has removed all those nasties you just saw on the page before, 
Uh, you can then get an ionizer. Uh, and essentially what that does is it creates redox molecules and it dissolves them in the water. And these run around the body, removing free radicals, uh, repair through increasing our own antioxidants and, and also being able to um, remove acidity from the body. The water can also be used to remove pesticides. So we spoke about that before from, about, I think it's about 80 plus percent can be removed from foods if you do happen to buy them from the actual supermarket, for example, and you don't have time to go to organic markets or simply sometimes organic food is just so expensive that if you can remove like 80 plus percent of the pesticides, then that's a really good outcome, being able to then um, feed the family with food that's just not poisoning them at the same time. And most causes of disease, inflammation and oxidative stress that we've spoken about, like with the gut, for example, if you can do something on a daily basis to remove the oxidative stress and reduce it and reduce the inflammation at the same time, then again, you're waking up and your body's actually always in preventative mode. It's not trying to repair the damage the day before and you don't have accelerated aging going on. So water is certainly not water. It can be used to totally transform the way um, you're living. A lot of the chemicals in the home can also be replaced by using um, strong acidic electrolyzed water, which is also called hypochlorous acid. And this is the same substance that our body produces to kill bacteria, parasites, uh, viruses, etc. And within 10 seconds of spraying this water, which is also safe to like drink, you've killed the surface bacteria on chopping boards or on your hands after the toilet, and you're not having to use all the harmful chemicals in the home anymore. It's between washing your food and cleaning uh, without chemicals. Again, you're just reducing how much damage is being done to the body. Next slide. A lot of the mental health conditions can be categorized and associated with two conditions. One is called pyrrhal disorder and the other one is methylation. Dr. Walsh has done extensive research um, on these areas. He used to work for uh, a pharmaceutical company and when trying to develop a new drug to help with anxiety and depression, he actually found out these two mechanisms and realized that there's no drug that's going to fix this. It's actually good nutrition. Um, and so he stopped working for, for the pharmaceuticals. And now his goal is to train as many doctors and health providers as possible in understanding what these conditions are. So the way I like to the, describe what pyrrhal disorder is, is using analogies. Technically, Pyrrhal disorder is a predisposition to producing an excess of cryptopyrroles, which is a byproduct of like hemoglobin. Uh, and this process is triggered whenever there's oxidative stress. That's that substance or that uh, what happens from other substances, whether it be toxins, chemicals, viruses, or stress, oxidative stress is created within the body. And that just triggers this process to get worse. And unfortunately, as our body is trying to remove all these additional cryptopyrroles, the cryptopyrroles are stripping us with the zinc and the B6. And you remember back on those charts how important the B6 and the zinc was and all those different conditions, they both helped and prevented um, such as light sensitivity, anxiety, low taste, no dream, lack of uh, smell, uh, decreased immune system. And again, if you go back on those other screens, you can see what other deficiencies of zinc and B6 were. So important for immune and hormones. And the analogy that I like to give is imagine you've got a big water jug and each day you're eating all this amazing food and you're topping this water jug up full of nutrients. Having pyrrhal disorder is like having holes in the bottom. If you are not amazingly filling this up every single day and you get a bit slack and it might take a couple of months or a couple of years but eventually that reserve starts to dwindle down because there's all these nutrients are coming out the holes faster than what you're filling in the filling up the you know theoretical water bottle 
then all of a sudden you're going to start exhibiting these symptoms. And that's why you can have this condition, but not even really know about it, you know, for some time into your life or others, it shows up almost straight away. If you've ever thought, yeah, maybe I have like ADHD, I get irritable, I get anxious, I'm just a worry wart. Most likely, if you were to do a test, and thankfully this is a urine test, nice and easy to do, um, you, you may have pyro disorder. Great news, so easy to fix. But it has a huge impact on the body if you do nothing about it. Methylation, on the other hand, if pyrrole is how many nutrients you're losing, methylation is how the brain is controlling the inflammation coming into the body, into the brain, and what to do about that inflammation. It's sort of like traffic lights. You know, they're programmed to go red and green to allow things to flow properly, the cars, traffic. In our brain, if you have two red traffic lights, you're essentially an undermethylator. The information is not being processed. And if you were sat at a set of traffic lights and they're both red, you're going to get very irritated, frustrated, depressed, anxious, worried, aggressive. Uh, and this is what's happening in the brain. Information's coming in. It's not being processed properly. Things are being misunderstood. Um, and we are getting a lot of these symptoms. There's probably about 22% of the population that are undermethylators. And because methylation is regulating your DNA, it is so important later in life, especially for like helping to control the growth of mutated and abnormal cells, um, aging, and to prevent the body from making mistakes, which inadvertently turn into a tumor and, and you know, worse possibilities. A smaller part of the population, if we can go back for a sec, uh, overmethylators. And this is when your brain has like two green traffic lights. It's chaotic. These people are all over the place. They talk extremely fast. They can't relax. They can't sit through a movie. They're just all over the shop. They're always like with their leg tapping. <laughs> They're, it's like they've got a pinball going through the pinball machine, bouncing all over the place. They just can't sit still. And you can totally recognize these people. I always laugh when I see one because I know, you know, what difference it makes if we can get them to calm down, slow down let the brain process the information and then send a signal, not just have the information come in and send a signal before it's even thought about what um, is supposed to happen. Sometimes when you say, wow, that person just doesn't even think before they speak, they're usually over methylator, which is a shame. Again, it can be easily fixed. So even if methylation is not a problem, we still need our brain to make all the neurotransmitters to keep us balanced. There's so many of them, serotonin, neurogelin, GABA, dopamine, histamine. All of these things keep us relaxed, calm, motivated, uh, and feeling well. And where these nutrients, even though the brain is sort of in charge of getting them made, they're actually made in the gut uh, from a lot of protein because that's full of amino acids. We also need vitamins and minerals, and guess what? Things like B6, zinc, and magnesium, which again, you saw on those charts previously, um, so essential, and I often see them quite low. These are needed to help make these neurotransmitters. So regardless of methylation, if it's good or bad, we still need the gut to be really healthy so our body can make the neurotransmitters and we don't want it to be in a state where it's in a dysbiotic state where it's all damaged. We want it to be in a healthy state. So when it does have all the nutrients, you can make these neurotransmitters. That's why I love doing a scan that we have at the clinic called the Oligio scan. It shows us all of the minerals and vitamins and if they're in balance or if you've got deficiencies or even heavy metals that are blocking the function of these um, minerals. So if you're ever feeling yourself just like not balanced mentally, you're just not on top of your game, you can't get words out properly, you get irritated and frustrated and angry easily, you're always getting sad or noticing your partner, you know, no matter what you say, they're always sad or worried or, or the children. A lot of this can be corrected if you just take better care of the gut, identifying food intolerances, looking at making sure there's no pathogens in the body, fungus, parasites, virus, bacteria, balance the neurotransmitters, do a test for methylation and pyrrole. And this way, our brain is making a nice regulated amount of neurotransmitters. It's not firing off 
because it's making too many and it's not too slow, um, unable to keep up, unable to keep up. So this is a very quick crash course into all the areas that I commonly see a problem with. Um, and thankfully, just through some testing and diet correction and lifestyle correction can be corrected. Keep in mind, these are all physical uh, and that's only a quarter of the story. Uh, again, our body is heavily influenced by epigenetic factors and that is coming from what's happening in your lifestyle, i.e. the parenting, the kids at school, the teachers at school, friends. This has a huge influence on the body. And if we can get both balanced, then amazing changes happen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nathan, for covering that. I, I've heard Nathan share this information so many times, but I always take it on board a little more when I listen to him and I know that you know when we combine the parenting and relationship stuff with the physical and emotional stuff health and wellness really we get fantastic results so who here listening in tonight or catching the replay would love to enjoy a happier and healthier home taking on board some of the stuff that Nathan's talked about taking on board you know, some of the stuff I've talked about with more loving, connected relationships with their children. Isn't that something we would all absolutely love? So if you're sick and tired of the yelling, nagging and threats, that may be you, it may not be. If you crave a closer, more respectful relationship with your children, if you want to gain cooperation with your children rather than control, because it's not about control, if you want your children to be both happy and healthy today and growing into their adult years, if you want to enjoy your day-to-day -day interactions with your children, you know, stress-free, <laughs> um, if you just want your kids to listen and follow simple instructions, or if you want to know that when your kids are all grown up and they've gone out and started lives on their own and they've got kids and, and they've got their own families, that you'll still be super connected then you'll really want to come and join us in our Nurture Your Heart to Greatness course. To me, that's something that I'm super passionate about. It's not just about the relationship you have with your kids when they're at home, but you want that beautiful connected relationship with your family when they grow up. You know, I, we still hang out and do stuff together. We go on picnics together. We eat meals together. We go on holidays together. We go camping together. We go hiking together. We work together, we play together, and we are a really connected family because we've worked on our relationships. So for those of you who stuck around, Nathan will be putting all of your names into the prize wheel. Um, so if you're on Facebook and you haven't made a comment yet, please do. So that's the only way we'll know you're on there. I know people have been coming in and, and out again. And if you're on Zoom, Nathan can see who you are there. So we're going to draw a 50% discount for one of our rolling um, courses. So that's a huge discount of half price. Um, we are going to draw two lots of one-on-one -on -one calls with myself. So a, a, a full-on consultation, talk about your family, your issues, your challenges, et cetera. And Nathan is giving away one of his um, supplement, well, a $75 supplement voucher. Nathan has an amazing range of beautiful supplements that he now produces as a naturopath, herbalist, and nutritionist that are just incredible. So Rachel, we'll have you up very shortly, but just before we bring Rachel on, I want to just share with you my why. You know, when I think about how things could have been and where things could be now with our family, I shudder to just think of where things could be, you know, not only where our younger son or even our elder son could be, but where our relationships would be, how our family would be or not be today. Um, so we, um, we, we practice the nurtured heart approach in our home. We have a, a greatness jar where we acknowledge each other. You can, you can read some of those there. That's just a few of them um, that we, we acknowledge each other. And it's, it's so beautiful to be acknowledged by your children. I can tell you that, especially when they're adults. So that, that's really my why. And I want other people to be able to experience those beautiful relationships as well. 
So we, we have um, our Nurture Your Heart to Greatness rolling course, which I've now, um, after many years of teaching this, formulated in a way that people can kind of roll into the course at their own, um, at their own pace. So there are 24 weeks of um, online um, course content sessions that you can access and do at your own pace. I do suggest one session a week, but you know you can go slower if you want to. I don't suggest doing like a Netflix, you know, binge and doing them all at once. You really need to learn, implement, and discuss. So we have. Um, a fortnightly discussion, Q&A and discussion, live calls where you can come on and talk about your wins or your challenges. Um, in the 24 sessions, 11 of those are based directly on teaching the nurtured heart approach. There are three sessions with Nathan going into more detail about physical and emotional health and well-being. The fortnightly calls are probably one of the most valuable parts of it because we can actually really help each other on those calls so it's not just you doing a coaching call with me as the parenting expert but other parents helping helping each other and that beautiful connected um, community community that we have so that q a and ask me anything time um, is really for sharing with the group uh, you get um, a, a 60 page um, workbook that you print off um, that you follow as we go in the course and it's got you know notes and questions and your home play and everything in there you also get the transforming the um, intense child workbook as well which um, is written by Howard Glasser and that comes from from the states um, you also get two one-on-one -on -one personalized coaching and mentoring sessions um, with myself you get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Nathan uh, as well and um, all of the recordings are available if sessions are missed and you actually have access to those recordings in a secure vault forever. And you also have access to the live um, Q&A and discussion calls for as long as you want. You can stay on those for six months, one year, two years, as long as you want. So the upfront payment for that, um, that course is $2,777. We, I have put on a very super duper early bird special for people who are either watching this live or who are tuning in in the next 24 hours to 48 hours. So if you um, decide to join our course or contact me for a discussion and to uh, have any questions answered in the next 48 hours, so 40, um, 48 hours from, from the end of this call, you will receive an almost 30% discount. You'll save $800 and the course will only be 1997. 1977. I love sevens because both of my sons were born on the seventh. So it's my favorite, favorite number. Um, also, as an added bonus, and I just actually popped this in at the last minute because my goal is to help as many families as possible. So you can actually invite a friend to join you for free or you can split the cost, which brings the cost down then substantially. So you split the cost with your friend or you can just shout the friend and let them come and join you for free. We have um, payment plans. So we have the early bird payment plan. We have the after um, early bird payment plan which um, you you can take note of or um, take a screenshot of or just watch the replay. Um, we also work um, with families who have NDIS plans. So um, many I've had many um, people participate in my courses using their NDIS funding. So if you have um, an NDIS plan, we can work with you on that as well. Okay, now if you are on from a childcare centre or if you are a family invited by your childcare centre, I've been having some very, very exciting conversations with childcare directors and educators and I'm super excited about something that is in the pipe, pipe works that um, we are going to be planning a pilot program for childcare centres. Um, and it's going to take time. We'll probably start with one or two centres, but we are wanting to work with childcare centres and families together. So the, the goal is to assist the uh, educators in the childcare centre and the families um, at the same time. So because when you're back to back, 
with this, um, boy, the results will be amazing. So please do reach out if you're listening in live or if you're listening to the replay and you are from a childcare centre, either a, a director, an educator or a family that's been invited by your childcare centre, please reach out because we're going to have some um, an amazing program put together for that particular industry. Now, I'm going to introduce to you um, Rachel Deed. So she uh, has had a vast amount of experience in um, early childhood education. She's worked in the childcare sector for 26 plus years in all positions, most recently as a director and a mentor for over 10 years. Like myself, she is a mother of two amazing sons, uh, 26 and 35, so kind of similar-ish ages to mine. Uh, she is passionate about authentic energy, aligned connections with her community, especially her children. And you can see her qualifications there. She has many, many qualifications. So, Rachel, I'm going to hand over to you just for, you know, two or three minutes, two or three or four minutes to share your experience of working in childcare centres, particularly using Nurtured Heart Approach and how it has positively impacted the um, child care centre community, the families, the educators, um, and all of the above. So over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Um, and good evening to everyone. Hasn't this been just amazing? I've really, really enjoyed um, Lillian's presentation and Nathan's. I never get tired of hearing about NHA and health. Um, but to get to the point, um, I have done a lot of PD around relationships with children and behaviour management, which I don't love that terminology. However, in the childcare sector, there is a lot of um, professional development around childcare relationships and, and how to control the child in the environment. Um, I have found when we introduced the Nurtured Heart Approach, at first, everyone felt a little bit funny using it because the terminology is a little bit different um, to what you're used to. But as Lillian said in her presentation about making a stand, we felt that we had to make a stand on how we were going to create meaningful, authentic connections with the children within um, our centre or the centre I did work at. And it really works. I can tell you it really, really, really works. Is it easy? No, it wasn't easy at first. But like any new skill, it took practice. And then we started to see results. Um, and I think, you know, one of the areas in childcare, quality area five, if there's any educators on the page at the moment, um, it really fits in well with that. And to build relationships and inner wealth in children, that's what we're there for. That is our goal. Um, you know, and the educators are craving, I feel, skills to be able to do that effectively. And um, I love it. I'm very passionate about NHA because I've seen it work with my own family. And I can relate to Lillian on a lot of levels about having a um, very interesting, challenging child. And um, so, yeah, I, as Lillian said about a, a bit of a pilot program um, and we haven't sort of looked at it too deeply yet. However, um, I just feel that the relationships between the family and the educator are paramount and then the educator and the child and it all works in together. Um, and I've seen a sub couple of people talk about the communication books and things like that. And yes, that can be a, a great thing to, to put down some strategies and reminders, but it can also focus on things that aren't going right as well. So you've got to watch that a little bit. We want energy to go in what's going right. Um, so it's been a privilege to be here this evening and thank you, Lillian, for allowing me to have some time. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. She has so much passion for children and for families and for relationships as well. I know we've had many conversations and, 
and I know that uh, she feels so blessed as, as I am to have learned about the Nurtured Heart approach because it's really helped to uh, her as, as both a mother and an educator and, and a childcare director to strengthen all of the relationships that she has for herself personally, but also to help other educators and families and parents as well. Um, to to do so, which is is what our absolute passion is. So thank you, um, Rachel, for sharing. Thank you for having um, me. Really enjoyed having you on. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for those um, who um, you know looked at the course and thought, yeah, that looks amazing, but right now um, I'm either not ready or able to join the complete course and have access to the complete course, but you would like to just join the fortnightly. Q&A and ask me anything in discussion calls. I'm really putting lots of stuff in tonight, like early bird offers and bring a friend along for free. And now I've decided to, because I just want to get this out there. I really just want to get this out there with so much passion. So I've decided to do an introductory offer and it's kind of like a pilot program offer as well for just $37 a month. Or if you jump in on the early bird on the, in the next uh, 48 hours, just $27 a month, just to come and join the discussion calls. And then when you're ready or able, then you can join the course and have access to all the course content. But you'll still get a lot out of, you know, joining the fortnightly calls and you know, interacting with other parents and asking questions on there. Um, that um, so I'm just yeah I'm just doing that um, as a as another opportunity for you to put your toes in and start to learn more about this amazing way of communicating and relationshiping. So please feel free to connect with me um, if that is of interest. So for anybody who would like to take advantage of the, any of the early bird offers or bring the friend along for free offer or the, you know, just jumping on the, the, the discussion calls, please do drop me a line either on um, email, lillian at parentsupportnetwork.com.au or if you'd like to book in a 30-minute call over the next two days to discuss this, please do let me know um, as soon as you can. Obviously, there will be only so many um, spots available before the early bird offer ends. So please do touch base with me, ask any questions, clarify anything that you're not sure about, really get a feel for, is this a fit for you? I truly believe it's a fit for every single family out there, but of course it needs to align with you and your values as well. So just in conclusion, while Nathan just gets the, the prize wheel um, organized, I really just wanted to, to further share about my why, and I'm going to tell a very quick story and we're going to finish on time. So, uh, and you can read those letters in your own time there on the screen. So when I actually wrote this book, so this was my third of six books, and I keep talking about this book because it's my absolute favourite, The Revolting Child, A Blessing in Disguise. So I wrote this in 2009, just as my son was turning 16. It was published just before he turned 16. And I did a couple of book launches, and then I was doing, I was invited to do a book launch that was going to be quite a big one with several hundreds of people there. And um, they actually asked if our son would come along. He wasn't terribly excited about that initially, but because he knew how passionate I was and how I wanted to help people, he agreed to come along. But he was just wanting to kind of sit in the background a bit. But anyway, at the end of the, um, of the talk that my husband Andrew and I did, um, and we were talking about this book, we had a Q&A. And this story is so important for you. So please put your listening ears on and really listen to this because when this question was asked, my ears were like, oh my gosh, I need to hear the answer to this. And it was a simple question, but for me, it's become a very profound one. So this particular gentleman actually said, you know, can I ask your son a question? And he kind of shrugged and went, oh, I guess so. He wasn't that keen, but he stood up. And the gentleman said, okay, we've just heard your story. We've heard where things have been in the last you know, few years. And we've learned and heard and seen the transformation that's happened in the last 10 months or so. So it was only 10 months earlier that he was kicked out of school, in trouble with the police, doing things he shouldn't have been doing, taking things he shouldn't have been taking. 10 months earlier... So, you know, the people in the audience could see who he was. They could see that he was a fine, you know, young man, not 100% out of, out of the woods, but he was, you know, certainly doing so much better and so was our family. And the question was, 
can you tell me what was it, and this is what they asked my son, what was it that took you from where you were back 10, 12 plus months ago to where we see you today? And I'm like, what a great question. I never even thought to ask that myself. And I could kind of see his mind ticking over for a few seconds. And it only took him a couple of seconds. And then he said, when I saw the effort that my mum and dad went to and are still going to, still doing, the effort that they're going to to be the best parents they can be, get this bit, I just wanted to be the best son. So for me, that is everything. He just wanted to be the best son, and he definitely is. I've got two amazing, incredible, heart-centred, amazing sons, and we have the best relationship. So if you're sitting back listening to this live or listening to the recording going, is it worth it? Is it worth my time investment? Is it worth my financial investment? Is it worth my energy investment? It's absolutely worth it. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. I look forward to having conversations with you. And I look forward to helping you on your journey with your children. So Nathan, um, do you have the wheel of prizes ready with all of the names in it so we can actually do the prize draw? I'll go back to the page. Yes, I do. I've got it ready. Beautiful. So where was that page? There we go. So will we do the, the first the first one as the, the, the big prize, which is a 50% discount for our um, Nurture Your Heart to Greatness rolling course. That's based on the full price. So that's 50% off that um, that course. So drum roll. This is All right. I don't know if you heard win. that, but the winner is for that one, Zara Howard. Woohoo, Zara Howard. Awesome. I'm not sure who Zara is, but congratulations, Zara. That is absolutely outstanding. And um, what a great prize to win. So now, Nathan, two um, one on one calls with myself. Um, 60 to 90 minutes. We can talk about anything you like. I will give you everything that I've got in that time frame to help you nut out some challenges or issues that you have with your family. Uh, normally um, valued at $160. So um, two of those, please, Nathan. All right. First one. Angela. Han. Angela, what was the surname? H A N Han. Beautiful. Yeah. Angela, congratulations. Um, please do get in contact with me, Angela, so that we can organize a time. The same with you, Zara. And uh, another one, Nathan, for a, a consultation. Jacinta Valerie. Yay, Jacinta, fantastic. I look forward to that with Jacinta. And a supplement, $75 supplement voucher. Thank you, Nathan, from yourself. Uh, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Deed. Rachel Deed, yay, awesome, fantastic. Thank you so much, Nathan, for that. Um, Nathan had a little spinning wheel in the background where he was, um, yeah, uh, how he, he got your names on there. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, we have finished literally right on time. So thank you to uh, Nathan and um, to Rachel for helping me be on time this evening. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in this evening, whether it be live or whether you're listening to the Facebook recording or whether you're listening to the recording. I so appreciate you being here. I'd love to have a conversation with you about you and your family, and um, I look forward to connecting with you further. So thank you so much. Any any final words from you, Nathan or Rachel? I, will, I think I've covered everything to cover. Awesome. Any final words from you, Rachel? Oh, just that I loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and 
<laughs> what value you two bring. Love it. And likewise to you, Rachel. I love your passion. I love your dedication to, to children and families. It really shows, you know, that you are a person who really cares about others. And I appreciate that in you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night.